Hey, it's Don. Today we're doing a paper restoration on a piece that I purchased in a paper haul not too long ago. Now, I've shown it before in some other videos. It's pretty ratted out. It's in pieces. We're going to put it all back together. We're going to fill in the holes, and we're going to be able to sell it for far more money than I could any other way. Okay, so now we're going to fix the cover of this. It's in terrible condition. There's a few pieces, as you can see. Let me put some gloves on here. I do put gloves on when I'm repairing stuff, and I usually wear these non-latex ones. I know some people wear cotton and stuff, but I don't find much issue with them when I'm careful. I've got tools that I can use to pick up pieces that go to the front cover right here. Here's another one right there. We'll just take those both off and set them carefully to the side. Now let's show you a few of the tools that we have here. Now this is what's called a bone folder. And I'll give you a little hint here. On these boxes that close really tight, it's really hard to get them out even with good fingernails. I tape a little piece of tape onto the side over here and it allows me to easily open these up. Now this is a bone folder or bone creaser. There's many different names. There's different versions of these. And this is actually a piece of bone. Full-fledged bone, it's cow bone. This is typical what they uh, make these out of. There are some plastic ones, but I do like the bone versions. These cost like 10, 20 bucks for a decent one. So they're not very, very expensive at all. Now what we're gonna use to actually repair this is mending tissue. And this is archival quality safe. I'll have some links to this down in there. It's Lenco is the brand. I've used them before. Now I have some more expensive ones that I use for some more delicate material. This isn't super pricey, this one here. So I'm going to use the lesser expensive material on this. I've got a couple different sizes, so there's no big deal on this. Now I usually use Japanese paper that's special order from Japan. It costs a lot of money, so that's why I'm using this instead. Now these only cost like 10 bucks or something like that, one of these. So, and they last me quite a while. Book repairers will use these as well. It is archival safe, so it's acid free, and it's actually a tissue paper. Now the biggest thing on this and why it's archival safe, why it's used by archives, is it's fully removable. Another aspect on these, when I want to fill in some color or some space, once I put this over the paper, any repairs will actually be done on this. So if you would ever want to remove the repair, it's easily removable without damaging the original item. This is not tape. It's actually paper with a specific type of adhesive on the back. Now we're going to remove just the cover part and just work with the cover part here. So let's remove the cover part. So when it has some obvious issues, we have a piece that goes in here too. So I do have this missing chunk, or at least part of it. I think it goes like this. So that piece is going to go there. When we're done with this, uh, let's start with the easier ones first. I'm going to start with, I think, this crease. There's a nice little rip right there. In fact, let's do this bigger one right here. So we're going to first turn it over. You can see the damage probably a little bit more looking at it from this side. So I'm going to use the smallest I think it needs to be to repair this spot right up here. I've got some scissors over here too. And we'll show you the whole process. And let's make sure we got a long enough piece there. So there we go. Now this has adhesive on it, but it is pressure sensitive adhesive. So let's get this on here. Now, I usually let it go over the edge just a little bit. Make sure it's lined up nicely. And then this is where the bone tool comes in right here. You just need to push it down onto the paper very firmly. So let's look at the other side one more time. Okay, now if you want to make it extra strong, you'd repair both sides of the paper, of course, which I may still do. Now when I mess with rips like this one here, I want to make sure that the paper, if it's separated and there's several sections of it, like a layer is split, I want to make sure I've got the right layer on the right spot. 
So now we're going to turn it back over one more time. Now this one's a little nastier one, so I think we'll use a little bit wider of a piece of this. So again, I just go ahead and pretty much estimate it. And that looks good there. Now this one I'm just sticking down a little bit so I can turn it over carefully without it sticking to the table very off very much. Now we've got some pieces to put back together here. Now, if you're careful, you can see that that piece almost disappeared in there. So I've almost made it invisible compared to how it was before. And we still have some issues there. And we're going to go over this too. Kind of hate to in a way, but we're going to anyway, just to be safe with it. So this is the back cover and it's not in the greatest condition as you can see multiple pieces here but it is repairable we can make it look a lot better I can fold some of these pieces back out here like this one carefully this here as well so some of this will look much better this is almost like a poster right here Okay, now we're going to replace this corner here too. And what I've got here is a piece of acid-free paper. Um, it's a little thicker. It's pretty close to what you see right here. I do have some more repairs to do, but I want to finish this corner off first. So we just need to make sure we line it up right. We're going to draw it out and then cut it down to almost the exact size. And then we're going to attach it with the same repair paper Then we're going to take it out and I'm going to cut it out. And then this piece should fit right in there. And we're going to attach it on the back side first. And it 
it's pretty darn close. Pretty darn close. I'm going to start just by attaching it. Now we're going to stick this on to where the attachment is. Now we're also going to do it on this side too here. We're going to stiffen this section up. So now we've got this piece together here. Now we're going to actually attach the front and the back. I've finished both sides pretty much. The only thing left to go now are the ones at the edge over here. All the edges, the corners have all been taken care of in this, as you can see. Everything looks pretty tight now, um, pretty decent condition. We're gonna do it on the back, of course, as I did with all the other ones first. We're gonna line them up. Now, I have a missing piece that goes in here, and you can kinda use this as a key, some of these sections over here. Um, in fact, I probably am going to just line up a section here in the middle, or maybe even this section, and we'll do that one first. Okay, now we're going to get the crease back in here. We folded it right where it should be. And we're just gonna get the crease. And we still are going to go back in and touch up the color on here. Now we've touched up everything on the front and back cover. We've connected them back together. Everything that's damaged was repaired with archival tape. Now everything I've done as well is removable. That's the biggest thing. This is all archival. Everything is archival. Now the last step here is to color it in. These are just some of the tools that I use. Each one of these is a different type of pencil here. They all do different things, but these are all archival and they should be safe on here. Now all the touch-up spots I do will be on the actual repaired areas. So I will be coloring in the new tissue paper that I've added in to fix the repair. I won't actually physically be coloring for the most part on the actual item itself. So even the coloring that I do will mostly be able to be removed as well. So we're going to zip this up. We're going to do some touch-ups on it and we'll be back in just a little bit here.
So here is the finished product here. As you can see, it looks much, much nicer. It's a solid piece. I did not repair the inside of this. I didn't think that was essential. The cover is what's going to sell it. These do honestly look like they were stapled together at one time, which I am not going to replace at this point, uh, just because I don't have any acid-free staples. But other than that, it's in really decent condition now. It's solid. It's not fragile like it was before. You can still handle it. I filled in any of the issues. It does look fairly complete. I recreated the corner here. I've recreated some other spots along the spine. I filled in here, I filled in there. Same thing with the back. The back looks excellent now. Now, most of the repairs you see on here won't show up under normal light. I've got studio LEDs beaming on this thing here, so any little bit of reflectiveness that's filling in. Obviously, there was holes up here, as I said, quite a few holes, as you saw. All the rips are done. Now, the back actually almost looks like a travel poster to some extent, but either way, this is the type of repair I do do. Now, I would never also recommend doing repairs on something that's worth some decent money unless you've done enough of them and know what you're doing. I would also never recommend doing repairs with anything but archival quality material. They all have to be acid free. Everything I added to this was acid free. So it's not going to further destabilize it, make it crack, fall apart or anything else like that. So anyway, that's what I have for you today. Well, there we have it. Hopefully that gave you some ideas, some thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends. Smurfed again. Thank goodness for Chef Boyardee. It's Smurfy good.